Hi everybody, it is January 14, 2019. This is France, the Yellow Vest movement. And it's still going on, the Yellow Vest protest, sorry. It's uh, still going on. Macron has uh, drafted a letter for the Yellow Vest protesters. Take your anger and direct it towards solutions. What is the solution with government? What's the solution with government? Destroying government. Many people say, oh, but they're destroying you know, businesses and they're destroying this and destroying that. Well, it started out peaceful. Was it in, in, infiltrated you know, for this violence? Are more and more French coming out angry as all hell because their government has destroyed their lives? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? When you vote and you sit back and you hope uh, that your government officials are going to listen to you and they don't and they don't and they don't over and over and over again, this is what you get. So Macron, please, start listening to the people. Maybe that will stop the protests. Unfortunately, uh, Luke, we are change. I think... Oh my goodness. He's in France, explosions, I think it was a bakery. Uh, I think one person died. That's the last I heard. I will link below to everything. But the Brits are now on the street. Macron démission. So I, I'm a little confused about what's going on here. I think this is related to the uh, Brexit. Just saw an article on Drudge that may will possibly have to step down Wednesday, but there are counter yellow vests, Brits who are countering the yellow vest Brits who are fighting what's happening in Britain. Yes, the people against the people. I don't see that happening in France. The French seem to be united. The uh, Yellow Vest movement protests in Britain. We want it now! We want Brexit! We want it Police against the people. The police. Yes, they protect the elite. Not you. It's obvious. What's this? Wow, isn't that nice? Yes. Your Democrats here in America. 30 Democrats in Puerto Rico with 109 lobbyists for weekend despite shutdown. How long are we just going to... We are so mentally deranged in our country. It's, it's frightening so demoralized, degraded, thinking still that we're just hot shit. And we are so not that. You know, more and more people are going over the financial edge. More and more people are having their homes destroyed, brought about by weather events or fires. You don't hear from them. You only hear the loudest voice is mainstream media. And then you have an awful lot of comfortable Americans still, although that group is getting smaller and smaller every single day. But that's the main focus. Those people who are comfortable, who do nothing, they can still write out a check to the IRS. They can still pay their bills. And they can still live their relative comfort. Those are the people who don't do anything. They don't have to change. Nothing, nothing has come to them that motivates them to do anything to change.
And that's our biggest problem, the American people who don't care about anything but their own comfort, their own little lives. They think they're good, they vote. That's all they have to do. But we have every single day in our face the evil that is taking down this country. In our face, it cannot be denied any longer. These people in Congress do not represent you. But you love the delusion. And coming out of that delusion would be hard. It would be work. It would, yeah, it would be necessary for you to put time and effort. You know, you got to take a step back. You got to look objectively at what's taking place. All that. Who cares? I'm comfortable. I can pay my bills. I still have my home. That comfort is being eroded out of so many people's lives from so many people's lives. It is phenomenal. And it is coming to everyone. How can we allow this to go on? That comes from a thoroughly degraded, demoralized people. Oh yeah, they think they're fabulous. But look at, look at how they live. Nothing fabulous about it. 30 Democratic lawyers left the government shutdown behind Friday on a chartered flight to Puerto Rico for a winter retreat with 109 lobbyists and corporate executives, during which they planned to see the hit Broadway show, Hamilton, and attend three parties, including one with the show's cast, members, and their families included. They are warm, enjoying their vacation in Puerto Rico. This was the PAC's uh, memo to all that joined this retreat. We are excited for you to join us for CHC Bold PAC's 2019 winter retreat in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Each year, this retreat serves as a way for our CHC Bold Pack members and friends in the DC community to come together to escape the cold and discuss our shared priorities for a stronger and more prosperous country. No, for a stronger and more prosperous Congress that represents corporations. Who was there? Well, you got K Street firms, R.J. Reynolds, Facebook, Comcast, Amazon, PHRMA, Microsoft, Intel, Verizon, and unions like the National Education Association. Seaside resorts, yes, for our representatives, while their slaves, their government slaves, are going without paychecks. Saw on Drudge an article that said that some of them are having to go to payday loan places, which will only put them in greater financial debt because of the interest of those payday loan, uh, the loan companies, the interests are so high. But these guys are, are, yeah, they are really having a good time on your dime. You pay their salary. They have fabulous benefits. And then they also get to live a, a luxurious life that only increases as they stay in Congress because those lobbyists are giving them money. We know how corrupt our government is and we sit back and do nothing. Nothing. It's so sad to see what this country has become. You know, uh, Californians Newsom, $260 million to extend Medicaid to more illegal immigrants. Doesn't matter. Brown, Newsom, your government in California destroying you. Now, California, wow, no other state has more activists trying their hardest to fight what is happening in California. But you've got too many Californians who sit it back, do nothing, because they don't care. 
they still can afford to pay the taxes, to pay the higher utility bills. Those are the enemy that we face every single day, those people that do nothing. Oh, they might bitch and complain about their government, but they write out their checks. As their taxes increase, as more and more gets taxed in California, a subscriber sent me an article about how water is going to be taxed in California. Um, who pays for this? Who pays for these uh, increases, Medicaid for more illegal immigrants? When Newsom, when he was sworn in last Monday, and he said, Sanctuary to all. Yeah, California. Sanctuary to all. Who pays? for those all. You guys, does Newsom? No. Newsom lives fabulously while you get screwed. How long are we going to do this here? Does it encourage more illegal immigration? Absolutely. Uh, look, he's also proposing a fine on the uninsured in California. So that fine that was lifted from Obamacare, states are now passing legislation to enact a fine on those uninsured. What the federal government does that might help you, states come and uh, do the opposite. PG&E, now the CEO quit, and PG&E is threatening bankruptcy. You don't have to read this article. What you need to read is this. PG&E's planned bankruptcy filing could be a bluff to force California lawmakers to act. After all, if PG&E goes down, it would be shielded from bankruptcy-related lawsuits while Californians will be paying a higher tax rate now. You guys know, because it was in your papers, that your last governor, who just uh, retired, no, he's going to be a big player in the takedown, but what did he do? He, he signed legislation that made you, you guys in California, pay for PG&E's billions of fines. The fines that corporations, now we've known this, those fines, whether it's a corporation outside of, you know, these utility companies, whether it is a utility company, any fine that they are hit with, they pass over to the consumer or to the uh, rate payer. You will be paying for it. Yes, it is a bluff. It's ridiculous to think that PG&E is going bankrupt when you've had legislation passed that does not, uh, it, it absolves PG&E from paying those fines. You pay the fines. So how is PG&E bankrupt? This is yet another ruse to get Newsom to sign legislation so that you will be paying the fine for the latest fires. What did Congress actually do before they decided to go to Puerto Rico? Well, the Senate, the first bill that comes out of the Senate is an anti-BDS bill. Really. That was their first priority. A pro-Israel bill that essentially destroys more of the First Amendment. So the Senate said to you, once again, we're going with Israel and fuck you, Americans. We don't care about your Constitution. So this anti-BDS bill uh, is, uh, well, 
It would give the states the legal blessing to punish companies that choose not to do business with Israel or Israeli-owned enterprises. 26 states have laws or their governors have signed executive orders to punish contractors for boycotting Israel. Now, what are those states? Huh, Kentucky. Kentucky is the latest one. United with Israel is Kentucky. Really, Kentucky? So, <laughs> it's such a joke. This country is such a joke. Um, executive order to, or was it legislation? Doesn't matter. Your governors who are signing executive orders, they are the king of your state decreeing these rules, regulations, laws. So any contractor that even voices their wanting to boycott Israel will no longer be on the list of contractors on the state government lists. You will be out of work. But it doesn't just stop with government contractors, but it goes into academia, into the cultural sphere. But what are the states? Montana, Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Iowa, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Michigan, Texas, Nevada, Kansas, Louisiana, and Wisconsin. All of these states, you stand with Israel. Wow. Kansas. South Carolina. What's going on here? You know, um, Paul Craig Roberts wrote an interesting piece. Short. So Mark Rubio, he was the uh, guy that in the Senate proposed this anti-BDS bill. So Mark Rubio poses as a representative of Florida Republicans, but in truth, he represents the interests of Israel. It's been clear for a very long time that those you vote for do not represent you. They represent Israel. They represent corporations. But you keep paying. You keep paying their salaries. Um, <laughs> he is sponsor of legislation that punishes Americans who boycott Israel as their way of protesting Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. So your representatives in Congress passed this, passed these pro-Israeli uh, laws that punish you, benefit Israel. But if you know about all of the evil, yes, evil, that the Israeli government and military is committing, not only in that walled off prison that they created for the Palestinians, they trapping them in a location and then they send their military jets to drop bombs to destroy them. Nothing could be so blatantly evil than that. But if you criticize that action, you're considered anti-Semitic and you should be punished. But if you've got the principles that operate in a way that you cannot just stand back and do nothing and remain silent, you as an American, a free American, you take action, you're punished by your own government. Wow. Yesterday, January 9th, yeah, it was that first piece, that's our priority, Israel. 
get this legislation passed so more states will feel comfortable passing their own anti-BDS legislation or governors will be writing executive orders to protect Israel not you they'll destroy your constitutional right to speak out and to take action to boycott a government that needs to be boycotted but our Congress says no you're not going to do that it failed to pass the Senate a lot of people are claiming it was the Democrats no the Democrats are in Puerto Rico Puerto Rico having a a nice warm winter they go there to escape the cold how many Americans can't afford to heat their homes we have more and more homeless living on the street very very cold we have Americans dying of the cold hey but let's let's just keep paying these people to have a fabulous time in Puerto Rico are we stupid yeah we're stupid um, all right so he goes on the Democrats are not opposed to the bill the senators of both parties are too well paid in campaign contributions by the Israeli lobby to vote against anything that Israel wants every 18 months and listen to this every 18 months the US government hands over to Israel enough money to build Trump's wall hmm why don't we just skip one year of handing over those billions to Israel to build the wall oh no we gotta get you to pay for it we gotta put up GoFundMe uh, pages to get Americans to donate to go build that wall what's happening with the millions and millions and millions that that GoFundMe page got is he gonna walk and hand it over to Trump there are so many ways the foreign aid we could slice off a percentage of the foreign aid that we give to every country and build that wall you don't even have to uh, deprive Israel of their billions just a small percentage but no because I guess Americans actually do believe that there's no money to build the wall so they have to donate to build it themselves oh Jesus we're such a mess we are such a mess and unless we do the work necessary to rise above and get a little bit more intelligent and a little bit more smarter and a little bit more active we can kiss this country goodbye you can kiss today your life goodbye even though you're still living it you can kiss it goodbye because it's gonna be a goodbye soon enough so yeah we spend we give Israel billions of dollars they build their wall to keep the Palestinians locked in oh could that wall that could be built on the southern border to keep us locked in could be uh, or, you know I don't I don't get now the house has a bill that they passed they passed wow 411 of them voted on a bill that would force President Trump to nominate an anti-semitism envoy it that that seat has been vacant so the position that has been vacant since he took office well they they raised the position to the rank of ambassador which means that Trump has to nominate somebody within 90 days the special envoy what did they do serve as the primary advisor to and coordinate efforts across the US government relating to monitoring and combating anti-semitism and anti-semitic incitement in foreign countries working for Israel special envoy to monitor and combat anti-semitism act was sponsored by a Republican New Jersey Christopher Smith <laughs> Christopher Smith, the largest campaign 
donation he got was from NORPAC, a pro-Israel political action committee. Sorry, this stuff has been going on so long. They don't give a shit how much you know anymore because they know you're not going to take any action to stop them from screwing you. These guys must be laughing, laughing together, Republicans, Democrats, no different, laughing at everybody who is still caught up in this delusion that we actually have a government. You know, I read this piece and it was Catherine Austin Fitz who has been out, you know, talking, hey, we have a very, very corrupt government and there's two books. You know, the money, the black market, uh, the lack of transparency, It's, it, it can't be de denied anymore. It can't be denied. You know, when things become so unbelievably obvious that you're stuck with either really cementing yourself in a delusion and knocking out every bit of information that threatens the comfort of that delusion, or, or you've got to admit that you don't care. You're just going to let this country get darker and darker and more and more people taken out. Well, what does she say here? Um, we know that she has been, you know, Ringing the bell, twenty-one trillion in missing money, Department of Defense and HUD, twenty-one million. Federal government is not talking or answering questions, even though the DoD, Department of Defense, recently failed its first ever audit. They don't care. And well, what's going to be happening? It's just a open running bailout to. Anyone they want to bail out. Under this structure, you can transfer assets out of the federal government. And this is uh, the latest coup. You know, she talks about how we had a financial coup. Now they're making it legal. It's a legal coup to consolidate the financial coup. They passed legislation to protect themselves. And they pass legislation, uh, legislation to screw you, to make your life harder. This has been going on for decades. Don't ask me what the solution is. I've already said you've got to get active in your communities. You've got to uh, uh, organize. You have to find out what's happening in your own community with your town council and then you've got to somehow change your psyche to realize that these people don't give a shit about your constitutional rights. Stop caring about the legal structure of our country because it's gone. It's destroyed. Get rid of these corrupt government officials immediately. I don't care if you don't have on the books a recall of governors like in California, you have to demand these people step down. Yeah, it's called a fight. It's called war. And that means that you take any means necessary to protect yourself. Sitting back, not doing anything, waiting for Jesus to come and, you know, make everything good again or or the savior in the White House with the white hat. It doesn't work that way. And nothing is going. No one is going to save you but you. All right, so you can read about the, the legal coup that is going to protect the financial coup, but what does Catherine Austin say? 
We cannot sit around and passively depend on a guy we elected president. The president cannot fix this. We need to fix this. This is Main Street versus Wall Street. This is honest books versus dirty books. If you want the United States in 10 years to resemble anything like it was 20 years ago, you're going to have to do it. You are going to have to do it. And there is no one else who can do it. You have to first get the intelligence to know what's going on. You got to, you got to take action. Now, if we were united, we could, we could organize a no work week. No more work. No, no more buying week. You stop purchasing things. You stop working. No more paying taxes done. And then you start demanding that your representatives who represent corporations step down, get them out. You know, we're, th we're done, okay? Because Americans will never change. They just won't change. More and more will be destroyed. The comfortable will do nothing until they're destroyed until everybody's thoroughly destroyed. That is what is going on here. It's sad to watch this. You know, I don't even, I don't know what we're doing here. What are we doing here? Just get more and more information? For what? For what? You know, seven years ago, I really did believe that, wow, okay, there are people here and they're working together we could get something going. Nothing happened. The breakdown in this community has been extraordinary. No, I don't trust anybody. Few, a few left that I still trust. But in terms of trusting them to get their subscribers motivated to take action, I don't. I don't. Um, so, you know, I, every single day I face Americans who do not give a shit about anything. Anything but their own life. Their own comfort. So that destroys us all. Look, it's now or never and frankly everything is just so far gone and a mess and convoluted, you know, that, <laughs> yeah, I have subscribers and I frankly don't even think she watches my one subscriber doesn't watch my videos because of my saying what I just said. You know, she's waiting for Trump to force out the corrupt politicians in California. We really do need to reevaluate those beliefs that we have because those beliefs can allow you to believe that you're good and you're doing this and you're really concerned when your actions are actually uh, saying something very different. I'll link below to everything. It's really sad. It's very hard to watch this go on every single day. And it's overwhelming now. It, it's gotten to the point where, you know, it's hard to live in such a demoralized society. Hard to live where you can't trust anybody because everybody's lying. Hard to live when you see all of this destruction take place and you see nobody care. You know, it's an energy that is in this country that is so toxic. It's not a good energy at all. Not a good, it's certainly not inspiring. And, you know, I now think every single day when I go to post, I'm, I'm thinking, what am I doing this for? What? 
You know, it's kind of essentially the same information over and over and over and over and over again. And why? Why? For what? Is, is anybody going to be taking the information and doing something with it? No. The problem, you know, with people who are demanding solutions, first of all, you're an adult. Start thinking about solutions and keep it small. Keep it in your community. You, it doesn't take much to realize, okay, within my own community, I have a town council that is corrupt. They continually raise my property taxes, my uh, taxes on everything. You organize with people and you stop paying those taxes. You know, that's one solution. It doesn't take much to realize that that is a solution, but I don't think people can think about solutions because those solutions that they think about would, requ would require them to change, to change. And that's the problem. You know, we all want change. Haven't you seen that cartoon? Who wants change? I do. I do. Who wants to change? All links are below.